Tom? Yeah.
Please stand and join us in praise and worship. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Can't help but sing with all of heaven roar 
Corinthians will be read. first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32. Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore to this day the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. Here ends the first lesson. May these words bless us and guide us. The second lesson is taken from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 18. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 18. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias, the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again 
and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Here ends the second lesson. May these words bless us and guide us. Please stand for the last songs.
and forever my soul cries out So here I stand this week. Thank you for being with us through every step of our life and just the craziness of our life. We thank you, God, for just guiding us and helping us, God, and for just never leaving us. Father, we thank you, and we ask that you continue to be with us, God. Be our hiding place and shield from the evil of this world, God. Give us the grace to receive your word and rejoice in it. We love you and we praise you in your holy name, I pray. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that I may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be your son, O Holy, Hosanna in the highest. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, mighty Lord. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. Holy art thou, O God. Holy art thou, immortal Lord. Lord the Messiah, who is crucified for us, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Lord, accept our praise and worship and have mercy upon us. Glory be to you, O God. Glory be to you, O Creator of all. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Give to us knowledge and discernment of your divine word. Fill us with the truth of your holy gospel, the riches of your wisdom and the gift of your spirit. Enable us gladly to obey your commands and perfectly to fulfill your holy will. Make us worthy to receive your blessings and mercies at all times, now and forever. Amen. Psalm of Confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant you bring your mercy, saw, saw mercy through, wait, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the second epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians. Praise to you, O Lord of the Apostles. O Lord, grant us grace to discern your word. We are always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith and all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers, considers it to, just to repay with affliction those who afflicted you, and to grant relief to those who are afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes on that day to be glorified in the saints and to be marveled at, um, marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, that our, our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith for his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, up to the Lord's sacrifices of praise. Come and worship in his holy courts. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let us stand in silence and reverence. And listen to the proclamation of the living word of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you all. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, which proclaims life and salvation to the world as recorded by Apostle John. In the days of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, word of life, God incarnate of blessed Virgin Mary, it happened in this manner. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
peace be with you then he said to thomas put your finger here and see my hands reach out your hand and put it in my side do not doubt but believe thomas answered him my lord and my god this is said to him have you believed because you have seen me blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe peace be with you all thank you lord yes jesus you need the lord of the world or we don't call to thee enable us by grace to praise thee Any words from your gospel you know on her brothers and sisters we must pray always to the lord for reconciliation and peace and for his blessings and mercy lord in your mercy hear our prayers let us pray to the lord for unity in the church and harmony between all people and communities lord in your mercy hear our prayers let us pray for peace in our families and grace in our hearts that we may be strengthened in faith Lord in your mercy hear our prayers let us pray for recovery of health for the sick comfort for the distressed deliverance for prisoners safety for travelers unity and love for those who are estranged Lord in your mercy hear our prayers let us give glory to God the Father Lord of all worship his only begotten son and praise his holy and life-giving spirit Lord of all blessings we commit our lives into your keeping and pray for your blessings Gracious God have mercy upon us and bless us amen Let us come together to recite the creed that is a statement of our faith and belief We believe in one true God the Father almighty Maker, Maker of heaven and earth and all things visible and invisible We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God God of the Father before all the world light of light very god of very god 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 is not made being of one substance with the father by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the holy spirit of the virgin mary and was made man he was crucified also for us in the days of pontius pilate suffered and died and was buried the third day he rose again by his father's holy will ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the father He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead and of his kingdom there will be no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and Son to the Son worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets and apostles. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the new life of the world to come. Amen. please be seated now shawn vergis will make the announcements good afternoon these are the announcements for today sunday april 11th 2021 Next Sunday, April 18th, 2021, we will have English Holy Communion service starting at 9 a.m. The North Shore area prayer group members will be assisting with the service. Sunday school. We will have virtual Sunday school today, April 11th, 2021, and our dissection exam will take place April 25th at 2:30 p.m. Please reach out to your teachers for reviews and other exam preparation material. Thank you for everyone that came this past Friday for our combined farewell meeting for Jacob Butchen. It was a blessed event for all who attended. Offertory collection details. For Monday Thursday we had a total of 1,482. For Good Friday we had 2,945. For Easter Sunday we had 3,810. And for we are continuing our Diocese and Sunday collection. to reach our target a goal of 7320 today after service we have offertory bins in the back if you would like to uh, contribute your offertory for this or regular offertory you can do so at this time at the end and also through uh, through venmo thought for the week i pray that our new week is filled with hope reflected in john chapter 20 verses 29 which says then jesus told him because you have seen me you have believed 
Blessed are those who have not yet seen and believed. This time, I'd like to welcome uh, Jacob Etchen to do the, uh, the sermon for us this, uh, this afternoon. This is uh, Jacob Etchen's last uh, English Divine Service sermon with us, and we are, we are grateful for all that he's, uh, he's done to build up this ministry, and we, uh, we wish him success as he continues on with his, uh, his ministry in the future. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Greetings to one and all in the loving name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So glad to see all of you here again. I need to be a little uh, sad and uh, worried now because of the way I couldn't be consistent with uh, the ministry of EDS, English Divine Service, because of my other administrative responsibilities, because everything comes on Sunday, you know, people come to meet you on Sundays, wedding bands applications comes on Sundays. Now, every other thing comes on Sundays. But yet, to be sincere, I have thoroughly relished my time with all of you. I am very deeply touched by your desire to come and feel God's presence every time when you come for the English Divine Service. We have a wonderful team to lead us. Thank God Almighty for their life and witness. They're all busy people, very deeply involved in their own life's journeys, but they love their church, they love the Lord, and that's why this wonder happens. Though it's a small group, you know, this assembly has a lot of meaning to it, a lot of relevance to it. We are not benefiting by ourselves, but we are bearing witness to the glory of God for all the people who watch us. So my request to all of you is to continue with this good job. Though there may be experiences that may discourage us. I take this time to thank uh, David Shibu, Abhi Mathai, Jay, Nitin Sam, Viju, Abhi who leads the singing team, praise and worship team, Jenny, Julia is not here I think today. Nisha is a new addition to the singing team, and uh, it's a real blessing. Jidin's service has been wonderful, you know, throughout my time here as the vicar. Taking names is dangerous, I know. You know there is always that possibility of omitting someone, but uh, yet, we praise God Almighty for every you know, good thing that happens through all of these wonderful people in our midst. 
we are continuing our study on psalms i love psalms very much and now the the feeling of contentment and joy that i experience reading a psalm is never experienced when i read other books now all books are very important but psalms are more devotional that take you so deep into an experience of the divine psalms are termed as liturgical praises so historically psalms were used in the worship in temples and synagogues by the jews there are those psalms which are used in collective worship there are those psalms that are used for prayers at home or at different occasions in life they are more symbolic expressions of god's love to us or our speech to god so it's both way sometimes you feel like no you are talking to god sometimes while you read the psalm you feel like god is talking to you psalms are generally categorized into three groups categories there is a great uh, now old testament scholar his name is walter brugeman i would recommend you to search for his books he has written a lot of i think at least four books about psalms so it's good to read it's very simple not like no some other people who use a lot of theological jargons that create a kind of distaste while we read but this person you now writes in very simple plain language that connects with each and every one of us so he categorizes psalms into three groups three categories one is the psalms of orientation psalms of orientation in some other place i have seen you now that those groups of psalms are also termed as psalms of trust psalms of trust so while you read this category of psalms the feeling you get is everything is fine everything is beautifully ordered god is in perfect control of everything so such group of psalms are called the psalms of orientation everything is well oriented to the ultimate reality of god so we read in a psalm like this make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come to his presence with singing know that the lord is god it is he that made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture so the picture that we get is a beautiful picture lord is in control he is the shepherd we are the sheep and then the second category is the psalms of disorientation so in some other scholars used to term such psalms as the lamentations the lamentations it can be either personal lamentations or a collective lamentation it can be over a particular experience of distress in a person's life or can be over a historical incident that happened in the community life so it's a lament it's a petition it seeks god's help in a particular situation hear my prayer o lord let me cry come to you do not hide your face from me on the day of my distress incline your ear to me answer me speedily on the day when i call and the third category of psalms are called the psalms of reorientation 
the sands of reorient it's a progressive categorization no progressive idea of you have a sense of orientation then you are going through a sense of disorientation and now a reorientation so we know that again these are sands which can be expressed as cries for help cries for help so people cry out to the lord now people see that the help is on the way god will again be in control of everything so everything will be in order again god will be taking care of everything a beautiful expression of the you now this kind of a psalm is psalm 23 we know and our psalm 22 23 and 24 need to be read together we know what psalm 22 says psalm 22 is all about a fear of absence of god why o oh god have you forsaken me samets samus lamens no so this is the cry that jesus makes on the cross when he was crucified he is using the sam to you know go out of him as a liturgical prayer a prayer that expresses his anguish expresses his distress and pain while he is on cross but when you come to psalm 23 we know that the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he leads me to green pastures god is in perfect control so from 23 to 22 to 23 it's a journey from disorientation to reorientation even though i walk through the valley of darkness or death i shall not fear because you are staff and rod they comfort me so you are there in our in, in my journeys in the you now extreme anxieties fears oh lord you are there to guide me through to comfort me to console me so that is the confidence that the worshiper has in the lord so psalm 3 is the psalm that we are going to reflect on today i hope we had heard sermons or studies on the other two psalms psalm 1 speaks about a righteous man and it contrasts with the wicked person i don't did that speech i was here to hear it it was a beautiful talk or a study so this is the contrast these are the two possibilities a person can have either you can be a wicked man or you can become a righteous person who takes heed of the instructions from god god instructs us through various means through our experiences our brokenness our sufferings god teaches us as a lot of things but there are certain people who are close to all such kind of instructions from god they are the ones who are called wicked so we would say that i am not a wicked person because i haven't murdered anybody i haven't done no anything wrong wrong i haven't no st- stolen anything from anybody but that's not wickedness what the bible speaks about but it's all about our closed experience or close and our closed demeanor when we come to god's presence closed attitude that we have when we draw near god's presence 
We are reluctant to learn. We are reluctant to get instructed by God. And now, what is a blessed person like? Who is a blessed person? Sam says that the person is like a tree that is planted beside the waters. The waters represent the instruction that flows, now comes from God, flows to us. So the one who draws from it and grows is the righteous person or the blessed one. But when we come to Psalm 3 again, there is a ripple in the picture now that the still picturization of the blessed person now that's disturbed by a ripple. What is that ripple? We know that the psalm is a cry again. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. So it's, there is a superscription there over the you know, psalm saying that this is a psalm by David. The context is given there. The context is that now the king is old now. He is not as powerful when he was in, youth, in his youth days. Now his children are all grown up. And now they started you know, eyeing on his throne. So there are many wives, we know that, therefore there are many children too. They all are very able. They started competing among, uh, no, with each other to have you know, a you know, grip on the throne. So this is what's happening. The context is that when you read 2 Samuel 14, 15, 16, you will come across that incident where Absalom, who was the you know, smartest among the, among the children, he kills one of his brothers to establish his you know, power and right over his father's kingdom. And now he turns against his father, knowing this, David had to flee from Jerusalem, the capital city. And this is the context. Because Absalom is so much about, you know, craving for power. And now he is even turning against his father David, who is usually, you know, tamed as a very blessed man. Can something like this happen to a blessed man who always you know, took heed to the instructions from God? So how do you understand blessedness in our life? Are we ready to accommodate adversities into our idea of blessings? To prosper and to be happy does not mean to live without struggle and opposition. So here the psalmist introduces the idea of afflictions. But it doesn't end there. On the other side, it also, now he also introduces, he or she, we don't know who was the Psalmist, no, original producer of this psalm. Always such you know, uh, literary works were ascribed to the kings. We don't know who was the you know, real author of the psalm. Anyway, that's not our uh, uh, focus here. So it's not only the affliction, but also Faith in the health that comes from God. Lord, I am in afflictions, but my blessedness is this, that I know that the help is on the way. 
because the heavenly help is available for me though i am in afflictions so we have uh, heard a lot about sadhu kochu nyabadeshi you may all know him how many of you know him sadhu kochu nya one of the great evangelists of the mathama church he lived very close to my house idayar in mula it's very close to chengannur if you go there you can still see the place where he lived the worshiping hall where he used to worship you can see his uh, the place where he he is buried so this person loved afflictions can we love afflictions i don't know that's why we called him sadhu because he was i uh, know a, a a life of a different different kind and level and he used to say oh lord did you forget me today because i don't have any affliction today have you forgotten that i am here so afflictions are also part of our or need to be part of our idea of blessing because afflictions can teach us a lot afflictions can shape us as god's children so here the problem is that there are many force many are the force so who are the force do we have enemies how many of you have enemies who is your enemy the person in who is in contention for a position or your neighbor no sometimes very funny things i have heard like no somebody is changing the residence because uh the neighbor's dog comes and poops on your driveway who is your enemy owner of that dog no the force that the samus talks about are none other than the 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 influences that create impediments for a child of god to walk with god so the hurdles that come to us it can be anybody there is no permanent foe in that you know kind of a understanding it can be anybody the situations the people the incidents that create hurdles for us in our walk with god are all our force so david says there are many force they rise but they fall too but they still rise so that i feel this struggle of walking with god many are my foes o oh lord and now the sam continues verse 2 many are saying to me there is no help for you in god since he is a child of god as i told you afflictions are not at all a problem for him because he knows that help is on the way the heavenly help is on the way but now the people around him when he claim that the help is on the way people tell him that there is no point in you trusting god god is not going to help you so it's very uh, and now relevant to reflect on this in our times you know that now we talk about a lot of secularism in our midst we talk 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 about the human might you now the human capabilities we claim that we can solve any problems our science technology 
But this pandemic, I think, had taught us a lot of things. The best of our sciences, the best, best of our technologies may not be of any help during a time of distress. We don't have any other thing to do but simply to wait for the heavenly help to come and redeem us. So that's what we have seen during this pandemic. I'm not saying that science didn't work any you know, part in a solution that we are moving towards. But more than any other thing, it's our trust. It is the heavenly help that we received from our Abba, heavenly God, that really helped us. So when the world says that there is no help for you in God, what would we say? We should be strong in our faith to believe that this God is a mighty God and who is able to help us. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. So, and our God, how is God experienced? God is experienced as a shield. So this is not something that happens because, you know, we do something, you know, religious, uh, especially. It's not because of, you know, some religious act that we are part of, that we experience this shield in our life. But it's all about our daily walk with God. Being immersed and rooted in this experience of now being with God. We had readings for today from different uh, no, passages because you know, this day is celebrated as the new Sunday, the Sunday after the Easter. It's a new reality for the Christians. Because two Sundays before we know that, no? The crucifixion was the reality. Death was the reality. Brokenness was the reality. Scattering of the disciples was the reality. Now we know that this new reality is nothing but resurrection of life. The power of life is manifested in its, you know, majestic glory in Jesus' resurrection. Life is not ours. We need to know that. It's a gift from God. It's God's. And since it is divine, it has that majestic power in it. It cannot ever be, you no, know, trampled on, pushed down. It has that power to you know, come out of any kind of suppression and repression. So that is the new, new Sunday's uh, message. It tells us that life has that great power to resurrect. God becomes a shield. We know that the resurrected Jesus' presence is a shield. St. Paul talks about you know, whenever he talks about uh, now himself, he talks in Christ. In Greek, it is en Christo. En Christo experience. Being in Christ. Embedded in Christ. Christ in me and I in Christ experience. So that is the shield. Not because now we have a special protective equipment to protect us. No. It's because we are in Christ and Christ in us. And we know that God cares for us, takes care of all our needs. 
and he accompanies us in all our journeys even while we walk through the you know darkest valley in our life he is there i cry aloud to the lord and he answers me from his holy hill so where do where do i look for help i look up to the mountains or the hills from where my help come from my help comes from the lord who is the creator of heaven and earth so why should we we look up to the hills because hills you now in in the jewish context we know that this hill is nothing but the uh, you know jerusalem hill where the temple is temple represents god's presence so the help comes from god lord i will look up to the hills only i will have my sight fixed on your face i know that there is no other place from where i can receive help i lie down and sleep i wake again for the for the lord sustains me see it's not because of my merits not because i have done something i just slept with all this worries and problems but lord woke me up i am glad i am healed i am contented so this is what i would like to you know tell you again unless you make afflictions part of your idea of blessings you cannot ever be contented you cannot ever be healed and happy because now if you think about a blessed life as a life that is totally devoid of struggles and sufferings you will never be contented in your life you need to know that along with all the afflictions the help that comes from the one who created heaven and earth is always available for me so that is our point of contentment you now it's from where we draw that feeling of blessedness rise o lord deliver me o lord for you strike all my enemies on the cheek you break the teeth of the wicked so it's a figurative expression don't go and strike on people because you feel that they are your enemies no let it be done by god isn't it it's not my initiative it's it's not something that comes out of my desire to see my enemies are trashed but it's because of the god's doing god makes things favorable for us so that we can walk do our walk with god that's what it is let me conclude it's a beautiful psalm all the psalms are now when you sit down read it having your whole focus on each and every word that is very thoughtfully and meditatively written you will feel the closeness of god the comfort that the knowledge of his presence brings into our life what will be the distress and pain that we are going through how great be the hard hurdles that we face in life now lord it's too hard for me to push on but we need to know that this god is with us he is our shield he is the one who travels with us and who is the one who is always ready to send the help that no one else can send into our life 
So orientations are part of life. No, sometimes we feel like everything is good, beautiful. My life is so great. But there will also be times of disorientations when we feel this picture being shattered. I, I, I remember when, you know, I, I think I shared this experience with you when I was sent to a mission field as a young Achin. I was only 25 at that time. I went to a very different place, not like any other Mahathoma churches or mission fields. No Achin stayed there before. I was the first one to go there. We rented a house in a village and lived there with the villagers. And they all have life struggles and we had to share it. We had no other choice. We had to walk through, you know, the uh, waterlogged uh, uh, streets, you know, full of mud. You cannot wear shoes because, you know, if you wear shoes, you, you will lose your shoes because it will get stuck somewhere under the water. So that's how we lived. After three months came the malaria. I didn't know what malaria was, only when I went and started experiencing it. It was a great setback. So I decided to go back. So why should I go to a terrible place like this? Because we, 24 of us got ordained at the same time, and all of us were sent to different places. This is the only nasty place. Now all others are in good places. Why should I suffer like this? So I decided to go back. But I decided that I will take these evangelists too with me. Because I, am not, I don't want to escape by myself. But I will not even let the other two evangelists who were with me leave here anymore. So I decided to go and meet Thirumeni. I was so sick while traveling in the train. You now the passengers who were around me understood that now I am sick. They extended help. Now I still remember that Malayali auntie who gave me, shared her food and drink, even medicines while I was traveling. But I was at my home. I was not ready to meet anybody at all. I told my mother that, no, if anyone comes, don't let them in, because I don't want to meet anybody. So a week passed by, and then one of my professors, who came here uh, two years before, Pothanachin, came. He taught theology at the seminary when I was uh, doing my graduation there. Achin told me, Jacob, the, the picture that is in your background is going to crumble down. Don't worry about it. This is not going to stay longer. A new background will emerge. And you will be so glad about the help that God is going to send into your life. You will be strengthened by His Spirit to go back to the mission field. But I said inside me that, Achan, I am not going. But he prayed after that. He said, God is not sending anybody where there he cannot be present. So it was coming and now striking me like anything. Pierced my heart. After Achan left, I took the phone and called to the evangelist. said, the decision is changed. We are going back. I went and met Thirmeni. Thirmeni was also so compassionate. And he said, No, Achan, we understand your struggles. But unless someone goes and struggles, how will something good come up? We can take up challenges. We can assume afflictions and pains so that we can bring transformations in and around us. May God bless us all with this devotion. Thank you all for your wonderful friendship. Now, you always considered me as one of your brothers, loved us, cared for us, 
So we will ever remember your compassion and your care for us. So this relationship is not going to end here. I think we can continue it in many different modes. So be in touch. We will let each other know, know how we fare in our respective journeys, what are the new adventures into which we are called by God. So let that sharing continue. May God, us, God Almighty bless us all with these words. Thank you. Let me take this time to thank Jacob Pitomasachan for his valuable leadership that we experienced for the last three years. He was a very good leader. He guided our English Divine Service on behalf of each and everyone who is attending this service. We extend our love and gratitude to our dear Rachan. Thank you, Rachan. Let's all rise for the Hutama prayer. O Lord our God, glory, glory to you forever. Glory to you, glory to you. O Lord Christ, by your compassion and infinite grace, hear our prayers and accept our service. O Lord God, come for our help and cleanse us. O Lord, may our service be acceptable and our prayers worthy of your acceptance. O Lord, may your blessings, mercies, help, and all your divine gifts come on us who are weak and upon our weak human race and dwell among us forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God and of the divine God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and among you and keep you from all harm and make you worthy of all good gifts. Amen. Let us share peace among us by showing the sign of Namaskar. Thank you once again for coming and attending this English Divine Service. Special words of thanks for the uh, singing praise, praise and worship team and all, all who came and uh, led this service in various capacities. May God bless us until we meet again. Our, once again, thanks to Diego Bachan. Uh, Lord, let the Lord help him to continue his fruitful ministry in his new place in Bangalore from Rose Church. Thank you, Acha. Thank you, everyone. God bless you.